Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. We gather this morning to share in this second Sunday of the Advent season. A few announcements to share with you for those who uh, were filling Christmas stockings. Those are due back on the 18th, so please keep those dates in mind so that items that uh, we are fulfilling can be distributed on a timely basis. As well, the Ward 5 Christmas gifts, their collection date is next Sunday, December 11th. Missions to Seafarers shoe boxes are still being collected. You can drop them off here at the cathedral or the cathedral office or directly at the mission on Marginal Road down at the waterfront. If you find yourself with some gift cards for Tim's or McDonald's, we can redistribute them for folks. We often have people come to our door looking for an opportunity to warm up or have a meal, drop them by the office or leave them on the collection plate. So those are some of the aspects of giving that we are about and also remind you of opportunities to be on the receiving end. We offer a great variety of music events this Sunday at 4 p.m. an Advent procession with carols. The Cathedral Choir begins the journey from darkness into light, singing the Matin Responsory at the main entrance and then progressing by stations up to the high altar. Each of the stations includes a lesson read, a carol sung, and candles lit. The service culminates in the reading of St. Luke's Gospel in which the angel brings the news that Mary will bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. The cathedral's concert arose in winter. December 11th is now sold out to all regular tickets or regular seating that is, so thank you for your support. The Sunday school this morning were baking cookies in the Great Hall, and they will be hosting a bake sale following the 9.30 service and before this 11 o'clock service next Sunday. December 12th, it's the annual Lunacy Carols in the Cathedral. Join us for an evening of songs, sing-alongs, and holiday cheer, featuring a lineup of local singers and actors. On the 18th, Capella Regalis will hold a concert here with the Maritime Brass Quintet titled A Chorister's Christmas. Tickets available through Capella Regalis' website. And also a reminder, on the 18th, that will be a single morning service at 10 a.m. And that will feature the Sunday School's Christmas pageant. So do keep that in mind on the 18th, one single service at 10. I think that's it for the moment. As we now prepare to enter into worship, we offer this territorial acknowledgement. Although we have come together in person and in digital space, we each stand on ground that is the ancestral territory of peoples who were here long before the European settlers crossed the ocean. We gather here in and from the Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia, located on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We invite you to stand for the introit.
Today, on this second Sunday of Advent, we hear about Isaiah's vision of a new and transformed world, a world where all creatures live together in harmony and peace. We wait with hope for this vision to become reality, and the God of hope fills us with joy and peace in believing. We relight the candle of hope. Isaiah's vision paints a picture of a world shaped in accordance with God's will and design. He tells of one so enlightened by God's spirit that he would open eyes and ears and hearts to a new understanding of God's dream of shalom, of peace. As we light the candle of peace, we proclaim our belief in God's faithfulness in keeping promises. Let us pray together. God of all faithfulness, Isaiah described the one for whom the people waited, the Messiah. We wait also, but we wait in the joyful knowledge that the Messiah has already come to us in your beloved Son. We wait in faith, praying that through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, will be born anew in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
we join together in offering the collect prayer. Let us pray. God of justice, clear our lives of hatred and despair, and sow in us seeds of joy and peace, so that shoots of hope may spring forth in us as we await the coming of the Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. We invite you to be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of Christ. Although you will hear my voice, I pray that you will hear God's word, for I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is the second Sunday in Advent, and we have lit the candles for hope and peace. And when I was reading the lessons for today, I had the strong impression that in those portions of scripture, we learn of hope and peace with justice. I was trying to imagine what John the Baptist would have been like. How would the people have regarded him? Would they have said, who is this man? So I was trying to think of a modern example of this strange character. And the person who sprang to mind was Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine. Why, you might ask? I suggest that he's an up-to-date example of someone crying out, preaching in the wilderness, the wilderness of evil and destruction. He hopes for peace for his people. Who today represents hope and peace any better than the president of embattled Ukraine? Volodymyr Zelensky is a Ukrainian Jew who has been accused by President Putin of being a Nazi. Now, how crazy can that be? He graduated with a degree in law and has worked before and after graduation as an actor, a comedian, and a scriptwriter. Now he leads his people in a war to establish peace with justice. And that is what we all hope and pray for, for Ukraine. John the Baptist was a very interesting character. He was preaching in the wilderness near the Jordan River with the hope of establishing a different sort of peace among the people of Israel. He wanted the people to repent and live peaceful lives devoted to God. 
Now, repent is an interesting word because people usually think it means to be sorry for something and hope not to do it again. Repent actually means to turn in the opposite direction to which one has been traveling. And I may have told you this story before, but I'll repeat it because I think it's a good one. I have a friend who came to study theology in Halifax and was coming out of Clayton Park down to the Bedford Highway. He wanted to go to Halifax and so should have turned right, but instead of that, he turned left. And after a few kilometers, realized that he had turned north instead of south and was traveling away from Halifax. He had to stop and turn around and go in the opposite direction, traveling south to get to Halifax. And afterwards he told me, I suddenly had a better understanding of the word repent. When we repent, we turn away from our life's direction and turn around so that we are traveling towards God. What has all this to do with today's gospel lesson? The second Sunday of Advent, whose theme is peace. We heard the reading about John the Baptist as our gospel lesson, and John preached repentance. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The word peace does not occur in our gospel reading at all, but Isaiah clearly prophesies about a time of peace. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. But who was this man who suddenly appeared in the wilderness of Judea? We read of John's beginning actually in the gospel according to Luke. We learn that his mother was Elizabeth, possibly a cousin of Mary's, and his father was Zechariah, a priest. His parents longed for a child, and eventually Elizabeth became pregnant as promised to Zechariah by an angel when he was serving in the Holy of Holies out of sight of the people. Because Zechariah doubted the angel, he was struck dumb and couldn't speak when he came out of the sanctuary and couldn't speak until his baby was born and he indicated that he was to be called John as directed by the angel. John grew up in Judah in the south and Jesus in the northern province of Galilee. They probably did not know each other as children. In the Gospel according to Matthew, which we heard this morning, John suddenly appears as an adult <clears throat> and a very intriguing one. We heard this morning, in those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Matthew writes that this was the person that Isaiah had spoken of when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, when a king was traveling through the country, the rough paths were straightened and smoothed, just as we would do if King Charles were visiting Nova Scotia. The roads with potholes would be repaved, and the area would be made to look clean and peaceful. So that is what John was talking about when he said the people were to prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. However, John was talking about being prepared spiritually. The people of Israel wondered why there had been no prophets for several hundred years. No Elijah, no Amos, no Hosea, and no Micah. But along came John, who could be seen as the last of the Old Testament prophets, or the beginning of a New Testament prophet. He was the bridge. John was a strange character. He wore rough clothing, as had Elijah, just the skin of an animal held around him with a leather belt, probably just a strip of leather, rough leather. And he survived by eating desert food, wild honey, and insects. Many people went to the Jordan to see and hear him, and because of his preaching, repented of their way of life. They were baptized in the river to indicate that after going down into the Jordan, they came up into new life. They had turned back to God. When we baptize children or adults, it symbolizes them coming up out of the waters of baptism into a new life in Christ's church. When the Pharisees and Sadducees, the writers and interpreters of the law, came out to see what John was up to, 
He called them hypocrites. They thought that because they were descendants of Abraham, they were safe as God's children and didn't have to do anything more. But John told them that unless they could show that they were producing good fruit, that is, that they were living for God's glory, they would be cut down just like the trees that did not produce good fruit. Much of John's preaching uses symbols, such as unproductive trees being cut down and destroyed. John told them that he was baptizing with water, but that a more powerful person would come after him who would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. He, John, was only preparing the way for someone much more powerful than him. He was prophesying that the Messiah would soon appear. I wonder how many people knew what he was talking about. We sometimes think of the Holy Spirit as appearing first at Pentecost, but it was God's Spirit that we first hear of in Genesis in the creation of the world. God's Spirit moved across the void and creation began. God's Spirit has been present and active from the beginning, but we don't always respond to it. The word for spirit is also the word for wind and the power of the wind. And that power that comes to people as the Holy Spirit is actually the Spirit of God. That is why John said that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. <clears throat> but what is baptism by fire? We have always dreaded fire and particularly the threat of burning in hell. Middle Eastern language is always very dramatic, colorful and exaggerated. And this fire that John talks about is the purifying effect of Jesus. Water can clean, but pure, fire, purifier, fire purifies. We can kill bacteria by burning infected material. And that is why hospital waste is incinerated. We can purify metals with fire. And fire also brings warmth and light. So the Holy Spirit brings us power and strength and brings us enlightenment, purification and life. John was saying, repent. Turn around and travel towards God and you will be ready for the arrival of our Lord who will give us power and enlightenment, purification and life. John's final alarming picture is of Jesus separating the wheat from the chaff, the light husks that are not wanted. He says Jesus will store the good seed in a granary and the chaff will be burned. If you want to believe that you'll spend eternity in a barn or a granary, you might also believe that what is discarded will burn forever. However, we believe that God loves us and will give us peace love and joy in his kingdom, not in a boring barn, and likewise those who do not enter the kingdom will be somewhere else, perhaps a boring barn, but not in hellfire. These are only dramatic pictures to tell the story. In Advent, we think of Christ's second coming, as well as preparing to celebrate his birth. So let us repent, turn away from a wasteful direction of life, Turn around and go towards God and be baptized by the Holy Spirit and fire. This is our hope and our way of achieving peace in God's kingdom. God loves us, wants us close to him, is calling us and will guide us by the Holy Spirit in the right direction. We have nothing to fear. We can hope and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Let us confess the faith of our baptisms as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We hold up in our prayers today Linda, our primate, David, our metropolitan, Sandra, our bishop, Paul, our dean and rector, Helen, our associate priest, our associated parish of Falkland, St. James, Ray, Heather, and Maggie, our deacons, Jillian, our engagement leader, Mayanne and Zachary, our wardens, Russ, Pauline, Nicholas, Paul, and all who make music in this place, and all who serve here according to their various callings. We pray for those who are ill or in any special need, remembering today, Stephanie, Lara, Freya, Shelley, Ed and Patricia, Steve, Marianne, Kim, Caitlin, Morris, the troubled among us, Ed, Leslie, David, Patrick, Suzanne, Heather, Anna, Dawn Lee, Taylor, April, Dan, Kristen, and Andrew, that they may be comforted and sustained. Each of the following petitions will end with the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, and our response is, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace with justice throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to be cleansed of prejudice and selfishness and for your gift of your peace in our hearts, which passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who travel, that they may return safely home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for one another, that we may become your servants and do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. In our preparation of the altar, we sing hymn 106, A Voice in the Wilderness.
as we offer these gifts and as we offer ourselves. We pray together. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. 
All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. And these are the gifts of God. For the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. As you go forth into the world, go with God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. And our closing hymn, 108, Hark a Herald Voice is Sounding.